hey, family, when I work with taxpayers who owe the IRS, they often owe for one of two reasons. Either they're withholding from their income is off or they haven't made estimated tax payments. Sometimes it's a combination of both. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to figure your 2024 estimated tax payments. This worksheet here is going to show you the payment that should be made for April, June, September, and next January to make sure that you have an adequate amount paid into the IRS before you file your taxes next year. Okay. So right here, on this worksheet, and you can find this worksheet if you look up form 1040 ES, okay? And make sure you have the 2024. You are going to want to start with your adjusted gross income. Now, if you think your income is gonna be about the same as it was last year, you can go look on your 2023 tax return and see what line 11 is. For this example, I have a single taxpayer who has wage income as well as income from a job, or I'm sorry, income from a small business, okay? And when I say small business, I do mean micro business in this example. So this taxpayer's adjusted gross income that we are estimating is gonna be $75,000. Now, remember I said this is a single taxpayer and they don't plan on itemizing. So the standard deduction for single taxpayers in 2024 is $14,600. Now, you may be thinking, but I thought you said that this taxpayer has a business. They do indeed. A lot of times taxpayers will get itemizing on Schedule A confused with writing out their expenses on Schedule C. Itemized deductions are those things such as mortgage interest, charitable contributions, and medical expenses. When those qualifying expenses exceed $14,600 for a single taxpayer, that's when it makes sense for them to actually itemize on their return. This does not affect the Schedule C and their business expenses, okay? So when we move down here to 6B, this is an estimate of the qualified business income deduction. Now, if you're not familiar with that, this came into effect back when the Tax Cut and Job Act was passed. And what it does, it gives qualified business owners and even some shareholders and investors the option to take this deduction. When we are looking at somebody who has a Schedule C business, like the person in this example, if their wages that are paid are under a certain amount, if they're a shareholder, if their business makes a certain amount of income, they can get up to 20% of the net income from their business as a deduction. So in this example, this small business made $30,000 after all expenses. So 20% of that is going to be the 6,000. That's where I came up with that number. Okay. So here for 2C, we're just adding line 2B and 2A together and we have 20,600. Okay. Line three, we're subtracting 2C from 75. When we do that, we get the 54,400. Now, this is the part where a lot of people get confused. And in last year's video, they weren't able to keep up. So I'm going to try to go over this slowly, okay? For line four, to find the tax, we are going to use this number right here, this 54,400, because this is going to be the taxpayer's taxable income. So let's go up to the tax rate schedule and we have a single taxpayer, remember? So we're gonna use schedule X right here. Now, when we look at this, we have 54,400. So let's find that up here. So right here, we know that we're gonna be in this bracket with the 22,000 because the 54,400 is between the 47,150 and the 100,525, right? So with that being said, 
we know that at minimum, this taxpayer is going to pay $5,426 in tax. But what we do right here, we have to figure 22% of the amount over 47,150. So we'll take the 47,150 and we'll subtract the 54,400, okay? Now, when we do that, we are going to get, and I'm sorry, I said that, <laughs> I said that backwards, but you'll still get the same number. It'll just have a negative. So I'll say it over just in case you got confused. We'll take the 54,400 and we'll subtract the 47,150 to get the amount that's over the 47,150. That amount is going to be $7,250. That's the amount that we're going to multiply by the 22%. So that number, after we multiply that, is going to be $1,595. So $1,595 plus we have the $5,426, right? Which is right here. So in total, that's $7,021. And that's the amount that's going to go right here. This is going to be the estimated tax liability for 2024 for this taxpayer. Now, the beauty of being self-employed is that you have to pay self-employment tax, which is a self-employed person's portion of Social Security and Medicare. For this example, we don't have AMT, all right? And we're not going to factor in any credits. So if there were credits that were non-refundable, they would go right here. So for example, let's say the child tax credit, not to be confused with the additional child tax credit or the dependent care expense credit. Those things would go here and they would lower the liability. But as I mentioned before, in this example, we don't have any. So when we subtract line seven from line six, my apologies, this should be 7,021. But then we have the self-employment tax, as I was mentioning before. This is the self-employed person's portion of Social Security and Medicare. And this is the way we figure it. So remember I said we're estimating that this person's business is going to make $30,000. And that's how we got this 6,000 for the QBI deduction. So if we take that same $30,000, the IRS provides us with a worksheet right here, okay? So, I'm sorry, let me go up some more. All right, so if we had the 30,000 here, and I know these numbers by heart now, we are going to multiply that 30,000 by the 92.35, okay? Once we do that, we have, uh, one second, we have $27,705, okay? Then we're going to multiply that by this 2.9% and then by the 12.4%, which is roughly 15.3% of the original 30. Now, with that being said, let me go back here. When I go back to the bottom, I'm going to have to adjust some things really quickly because I forgot to do my 15.3%. So this number is going to change slightly down here. And I will, sorry. I pause my share there. Now, that self-employment tax is going to be the four thousand two hundred thirty-eight and eighty-seven cents. Okay, so when we add that, my apologies because I have a calculator that is not on the screen right now, so you can't see what I'm doing. We're going to add the four thousand two hundred thirty-eight and eighty-seven cents to the 7,021. So the total tax will be 
$259.87. And remember, this is an estimate, okay? Now, this number needs to be updated because we're going to look at 90% of that $11,259.87 and put it here. Now, what this is, uh-oh. What this is, is the amount that needs to be paid to avoid having an underpayment penalty for the next year. There is an exception. So if your prior year tax was smaller than this amount, whichever of the two is smaller, but it does have to actually be greater than zero, is what you need to have paid in before April 15th of next year to avoid an underpayment penalty. All right. So let's say that maybe you aren't able to pay the full 11,259.87 because all of your estimates are right on par with what it should be. But last year, your tax liability was only $8,000. Well, then that means to avoid an underpayment penalty, you would only have to pay $8,000. But let's say that your tax liability before you start doing your business full time for 2023 was 15,000. Well, then we go back to the 10,133.88 and that's the amount that you need to have paid in to avoid any type of penalty. Okay? So to figure out what your estimated payments should be, we need to take a look at how much you've already had withheld, okay? So using this estimate, we are saying that this person has $3,416 withheld, okay, for the year. Now for you, what you can do is you've already been paid a few times this year if you have a W-2 job you can make a projection based off of what's already been withheld to do an estimate right here. What I've done in this example, I'm saying, okay, if this taxpayer filled out a W-4 as single based off them making X, Y, Z amount of money, this is how much should be withheld. Okay, so like I said, for you, if you have a W-2 job, you can use your current pay stub and make a projection. Because remember, these are all estimates. They're not going to be exact figures. There aren't too many of us that are that good to get it right on the nose. Okay, so don't feel bad if this does wiggle a little bit. I always encourage people to estimate a little bit higher versus a little bit lower because if it's a little bit higher, you will get a refund and you can also avoid a penalty, right? However, if it's a little bit lower, you may get hit with a penalty or even a tax bill at the end of the year that you can't cover, okay? So for 14, we are, and I'm sorry, cause I remember I need to adjust this because I had the self-employment tax incorrect. So we are going to take this 10,133.88 and subtract the 3,416. And the amount that we get is 6,017.88. Okay. So the question is, after we make that subtraction, line 13 from line 12c is the result zero or less if it was we could stop and we wouldn't be required to make any estimated tax payments but the result is higher than zero so we need to go to 14b so with 14b we are going to subtract line 13 so this 3416 from line 11c so when we do that, we're going to take the $11,259.87, we're going to subtract the $3,416, and we are going to come up with $7,843.87. 
Now, remember, I said the estimated tax payments have to be made in April, June, September, and January. So this is where we get the quarterly tax payments from, right? So with that being said, we need to take the $7,844. Uh-oh. Have too many fours there. The $7,843.87 and divide that by four. And the amount that we're going to get is $1,960.97. All right. So this is the quarterly payment that should be made if income stays the same. All right. Now, the first quarterly payment for your 2024 taxes is due on April 15th, 2024. Yes, that is tax day. You can make this payment online if you have an irs.gov account and making the payment that way, you won't be charged any fees. If you go to irs.gov and you make the payment using the bank account, you won't be charged any fees. They do have the option for you to make the payment using a credit or debit card, but you will be charged a fee. Now, also as a part of the spreadsheet, you have this to keep for your records so that you can keep track of the amount that was due and the date that you paid. If you send a check or money order, you can put that information here. Or if you're paying with a debit or credit card, you can put the confirmation number. If you were sending a check or money order, you need to make sure that you are sending in these vouchers. This is Form 1040 ES payment voucher. Now this is payment voucher number four. I didn't fill all of these out. I only did number four so you could see what it looks like. Okay. And I need to adjust this. My apologies. So this needs to be the 1960.97. All right. So when you do this, you want to make sure that you have your first name and middle initial as it is shown on your social security card and your tax return. You're going to put your last name, your social security number, and then you want to have your address, the one that matches the address that you use for your tax return. And then you want to have your city, state, and zip code. Now, I would advise having this typed out and PDF, unless you have really, really good handwriting, okay? And as I mentioned before, you can pay online at irs.gov, etpay, or you can simply go to irs.gov and hit pay, and you'll see the different payment options. And you'll just want to make sure that you select for this to go as an estimated tax payment to 2024. But if you're sending in this voucher with a money order or check, Make sure that you write payable to United States Treasury. You also want to have your social security number on there. I like to put it in the memo line and for 2024 form 1040 ES. All right. And make sure that you do not staple or attach your payment with the voucher. It just needs to be included in there with it. So I hope you found this video helpful if you find yourself in a situation where you've messed up on these estimated tax payments before and you have a tax bill that you just can't seem to pay, I would love to invite you to book a call with me and my team at Bowen's Tax Solutions where we step into the shoes of taxpayers to represent them before the IRS and handle their IRS problems for them. And in case you don't know and you're new to the channel, my name is Timlin Bowens and I'm America's favorite EA. And thank you so much for checking out this video. Leave any questions or comments that you have down below.